Welcome back to another episode of Hot Mass Espresso. Guys, we are halfway through. This is episode five out of the first season. Like I said, I think I said last week, um, we're going to do 10 weeks per episode or 10 episodes per season and then take a little break and rinse, repeat. So uh, yeah, we are halfway through season one and I... I am floored at the amount of positive feedback and just feedback in general that I'm getting about how this is helping people. And that means everything to me. And uh, before I get all in my feels, let's just move right into what I want to talk about this week. So a lot of what I've said on my TikTok and live videos and everything else is that BPD is incredibly stigmatized and a lot of people have asked why. And there's only so much I can say on a platform like TikTok before my account's going to get flagged, my lives are going to get banned, I'm going to get banned. So we're just going to go over it right now. Reason number one, and this is not in any particular order, these are just what the order in my notes are. This is what came to mind. Uh, So number one, several serial killers like Jeffrey Dahmer was, I well, Jeffrey Dahmer was believed to have it and it was said in open court, yada, yada, yada. Uh, They were either diagnosed or it was heavily believed that they had it. It's also roped into what's called cluster B disorders and cluster B disorders include antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and my personal favorite, borderline personality disorder. And again, a lot of high-profile serial killers and criminals were either diagnosed or heavily believed to have had one of those cluster B personality disorders. So we're amongst fan freaking tastic company. Reason number two. It's not very well understood because of how unstable and just completely unpredictable it can be. When you're dealing with being a favorite person or going from a favorite person to hated the next day, it can really take a toll on the people around us. And reason number three, even trauma-informed therapists struggle to treat or just flat out will not treat patients with BPD. And I get it. It's... It's a lot to ask of a mental health professional to put their feelings and their want to treat somebody to the side when somebody with BPD comes in and it's very unstable and it's very unpredictable. And I get that you have to protect your health, you like your mental health as well. But it's incredibly discouraging for us to know that the help that we, and I mean desperately seek, because when you realize what you have and you're going to get help, you know it is going to be an incredibly rough, incredibly long road ahead of you. So to know that that help may not be available, it's it's not good. It's incredibly discouraging. I personally have been incredibly lucky with my therapist. They've been absolutely everything I needed, but not everybody is as lucky as I am, and I recognize that. Speaking of unpredictable, let's change the subject. The second thing that I really want to talk about in this episode is being kind of the sacrificial lamb, the scapegoat. You can go to therapy. You can go to group. You can heal. You can mend bridges with people that you have wronged. And there are still going to be people that see the broken piece. In someone's story, you may always be the villain. And with BPD, you've definitely hurt yourself and you've definitely, definitely hurt others. But when you're on the path to healing yourself, there's only so much contrition that you can do. These are, these are things you have to learn to be okay with. And, and they suck. They really do. You spend so much time working on yourself and you're still not good enough. Personally, I've been there. I've spent so much time in my sister's ear asking what I can do to be better and not understanding why nothing is good enough. 
But I also know that with a couple family members, I'll I'll always be the problem child. The hell, even that statement right there is going to ruffle uh, several feathers. But whatever. I I should note this is not an excuse to just act out and do whatever you want. This is specifically for situations where you've done all you can do and they still just need you to be the bad guy. But I gotta say, once you hit that level where you don't care anymore, it is so freeing. And I genuinely wish that for you because it's been the absolute best thing to happen to me. And with that, that wraps up this week's episode. We'll see you next week where we're actually going to talk my perspective on how BPD affects romantic relationships. I've been in several, so I have a few things to say. Until then, stay hot, stay messy. We'll see you guys next week.